global aviation market is undergoing a significant transformation, and the Russia MC-21 aircraft is a part of this process. This aircraft is Moscow's chosen instrument to challenge the long-standing dominance of Western manufacturers. But why is Russia so confident about the MC-21? Why was this aircraft built, and how will it compete with its Western rivals? Let's dive in. In the past, the Russian aviation industry was largely dependent on Western suppliers for aircraft and components, even for aircraft that Russia itself produced. However, Western sanctions in 2022 caused serious economic difficulties for this country. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. This event forced the country to seek greater self-sufficiency in many areas, including aviation. That's it. They created the aircraft by themselves. In fact, this country had already begun efforts to develop its own commercial aircraft for many years before the sanctions took effect. In 2007, the Yakovlev Design Bureau, a unit of the state-owned Russian Rostec Aviation Group, launched a project to develop a narrow-body aircraft to replace the outdated Tupolev aircraft. This project was initially called the Yak-242, but after receiving domestic certification in 2016, it was renamed the Yakovlev MS-21 and became known as the MC-21 on the international market. However, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine created obstacles in accessing Western suppliers, leading to delays in the aircraft's introduction. Nevertheless, this country remains committed to the goal of self-reliance in the aviation sector. Russian President Vladimir Putin announced plans to produce at least 1,000 Russian-made aircraft by 2030. To date, more than $10 billion has been invested in the MC-21 program, but the number of completed aircraft remains limited. Even so, this aircraft has received a significant number of orders, more than 300, mainly from this country's airlines. So, are these aircraft truly good? To find out, let's take a look at their technical specifications. The MC-21 aircraft comes in two versions, the smaller MC-21-200, which can carry between 132 and 165 passengers depending on the configuration, and the larger MC-21-300, which can accommodate between 163 and 211 passengers. The 200 variant has a range of approximately 3,500 nautical miles, positioning it to compete with the Airbus A319, NEO and Boeing 737 MAX 7. Meanwhile, the 300 variant offers a range of about 3,200 nautical miles, aiming to rival the Airbus A320 and Boeing 737 MAX 9 in the mid-market segment. Notably, the MC-21-300 was unveiled on June 8, 2016 in Siberia, marking a milestone as one of the first aircraft to utilize out-of-autoclave composite manufacturing technology for its wings. In addition, the MC-21 distinguishes itself with an advanced wing design, a key improvement for competing with today's Airbus and Boeing models. These wings were upgraded in 2021 with Russian-made polymer composite materials, utilizing a patented vacuum infusion technology. This initiative, backed by a 4 billion ruble, approximately 45 US million investment, now means composites make up 40% of the MC-21's airframe, resulting in a strong yet lightweight structure. Besides, while initially powered by Pratt and Whitney GTF 1400G engines, Western sanctions restricting access to these engines forced Rostec, a Russian state corporation, to develop domestic alternatives. The chosen replacement is the PD-14 turbofan engine produced by Aviadvigetel, which was first approved on January 20, 2020. Many industry experts considered the MC-21 a formidable competitor, potentially even surpassing the Boeing 737 MAX. So, what contributes to these positive assessments? But first, thanks for being part of the community. We're working towards 40,000 subscribers, and your subscription would be a huge help. Just smash that subscribe button. It only takes a second, and it means the world to us. Thanks a ton for your support. One important factor is cost. The MC-21300 has a list price of around 91 US million, significantly lower than the nearly 130 US million price tag of the MAX 9. Furthermore, according to Rostec's CEO, Russian airlines can purchase the aircraft for an even more attractive price of about 37 million. This represents a substantial competitive advantage, especially as airlines strive to optimize operating costs. Another area where this Russian aircraft shines is cabin design. 
It boasts a more spacious cabin compared to the 737 MAX 9, offering greater comfort for passengers. While not a decisive factor, a more comfortable cabin can enhance the passenger experience and influence the choices of some airlines. Regarding seating capacity, the MAX 9 has an advantage, accommodating up to 220 passengers compared to the MC-21's maximum of 211. However, both aircraft have similar ranges, approximately 3,300 nautical miles. Under ideal conditions, the MAX 9 can extend its range slightly further, up to 3,550 nautical miles. Although most of the grounded Boeing aircraft have returned to service, the MAX's continued incidents have raised some doubts about the model's future. The uncertain environment surrounding the 737 MAX could create an opportunity for the MC-21, while Western Airlines may be hesitant to incorporate it into their fleets, the aircraft could serve as a viable option for other airlines and markets looking to expand their narrow-body fleets. These advantages suggest that despite the barriers, Russian aircraft has the potential to carve out a prominent position in certain segments of the global aircraft market. In conclusion, this Russian aircraft is outstanding with some features. However, the decision between the two aircraft will ultimately depend on the specific needs and business strategies of individual airlines. How about you? What do you think which aircraft is greater? Comment 1 if you think it's MC-21, 2 if it's MAX. Not denying the remarkable prominence of Russian aircraft, but there are significant obstacles it must overcome if it wants to develop further. First, one of the most pressing issues is the availability of aircraft components and parts. Russian airlines are struggling to maintain the safe operation of their existing fleets. Due to Western sanctions, accessing replacement parts for foreign-made aircraft has become extremely difficult. Many airlines have been forced to cannibalize inactive aircraft for parts to keep their operational planes flying. This has led to a series of safety incidents, and this situation could persist as long as the sanctions remain in place. Despite this, Russia is attempting to find workarounds by importing components through unofficial channels. There are reports that they have imported some counterfeit parts or through intermediary countries such as Turkey, the UAE, and Tajikistan nations that have not joined the Western sanctions. However, these are only temporary fixes, as importing components illegally is both expensive and does not guarantee quality, and cannot completely resolve the problem of component shortages. Second, another significant hurdle for the MC-21-300 is the issue of certification. Even with the 737 MAX's issues, Western Airlines might be hesitant to adopt the MC-21. This can be the reason. This aircraft was denied European certification on March 14, 2022, and there are currently no indications that this decision will be reversed anytime soon, especially given the ongoing Russian military presence in Ukraine. This lack of international certification significantly restricts the aircraft's ability to operate in the global market, further complicating the efforts to achieve self-sufficiency in the aviation industry. If this country can overcome these significant challenges in the aircraft production, it could prove to be a strong competitor in the global aviation market. Do you think the Russian aircraft will eventually achieve international certification? What political or technical factors do you see as most influential in that decision? Finally, the MC-21, with a range of approximately 3,300 nautical miles, is well suited for intra-European and regional flights across Russia. However, its international reach may be limited to neighboring countries without a longer range variant. The speculated the 400 variant, capable of carrying around 260 passengers and offering a range of nearly 5,500 nautical miles, could enable transcontinental flights, significantly expanding the aircraft's market potential. Such improvements would enhance the appeal of the MC-21 series globally, positioning it for more direct competition with long-range aircraft from other major manufacturers. One more important thing, the impact of this aircraft cannot be underrated. The development of the MC-21 has had several significant effects on Russia. Firstly, it has strengthened Russia's self-sufficiency and reduced its dependence on Western aviation technology. Previously, they relied heavily on Western companies for aircraft components and technology. With this aircraft, they can be more proactive in designing and manufacturing aircraft, promoting the growth of its domestic aviation industry and mitigating risks associated with sanctions. 
Next, its development has stimulated domestic research and development in aviation technology, including the use of advanced composite materials for aircraft wings. This not only enhances Russia's technological capabilities, but also creates new opportunities for the domestic aviation industry and local parts suppliers. In conclusion, the MC-21 helps Russia enter the global commercial aircraft market, creating opportunities to compete with major manufacturers like Boeing and Airbus. This not only expands their economic and political influence internationally, but also provides opportunities for international airlines to operate this country's aircraft. Finally, the development demonstrates Russia's ability to overcome challenges posed by sanctions, showcasing its resilience and adaptability in maintaining and advancing its aviation industry. The MC-21 is seen as a promising aircraft, with significant opportunities in both domestic and international markets. This is evidenced by the over 300 orders it has received, primarily from Russian airlines, with Aeroflot leading the way. In 2022, Aeroflot, Russia's flagship carrier, made a substantial order for domestic aircraft, including 210 of the new generation MC-21. This order, which also included other Russian models like the Sukhoi Superjet SSJ-100 and the Tupolev Tu 214, was valued at approximately $1 billion. This move is expected to double Aeroflot's fleet size and demonstrates a significant commitment to the country's aircraft, which Aeroflot plans to make its flagship aircraft by 2030. Deliveries are scheduled to begin in the fourth quarter of 2024. However, achieving global success will depend on overcoming existing challenges. These challenges create some uncertainty about the MC-21's international prospects, although it remains a compelling topic in the aviation industry. Aeroflot's substantial order highlights their confidence in this new aircraft. Its future success will be closely watched, particularly its performance with Aeroflot. Time will tell how things unfold. It's also worth noting that Russian registered aircraft are currently banned from the airspace of most Western nations. However, they can still operate over roughly 60% of the world's landmass. While non-Russian airlines may be cautious due to sanctions, the MC-21 offers this country's carriers a significant opportunity to replace their Airbus and Boeing models. What do you think about the potential of this aircraft in the highly competitive aviation market? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you, and have safe flights.